Hi, how are you? Pretty good, how are you? Good. What can I do for you today, sir? Uh, I need to figure out how to file a complaint, and I also am going to need your insurance bond information for this agency. You won't get the insurance bond information from me at this point in time, no. Why, why is that? Uh, we don't give that out uh, over there. Now, I'll give you a, a complaint form to fill out, but you won't get insurance information from us. You, you consider yourself a public agency, correct? Oh, we do. Okay. And you don't give the information on your insurance bond to the public? Uh, we, I do not give it to just people who show up here at the door. If you want to file it through the Highway Patrol's headquarters in Topeka, they'll be glad to leave, facilitate that for you, yes. Okay. So how, um, also, um, you guys... During your kidnapping two days ago, you also stole some of my property. How am I to retrieve that? Okay, so I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. So, so I mean, you you're talking to me like I know about the situation where you're here. Mm -hmm. uh, I do not. I just know that you're up. You came to the office. You want to talk to a supervisor. They call me because I was out in the field. I came up here and responded. Figure out what's going on with you. So okay. why don't we start that? I don't know anything. What's going on? So um, let's see what's what, what what I can do for to help you at this point in time. Okay. So what I'm trying. Well, what the reason I came here was to collect some complaint forms so that okay. I can go home and compile my evidence and file complaints on each of the individuals that are responsible for committing crimes that work for this agency. Okay. So that is my purpose. Okay. All right. Do you want a complaint form and figure out how to do that? I need, um, I'm going to need 11 complaint forms. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. I'll give you one complaint form, which you could pile all the additional information into one. It's just one complaint form. And then if you have any additional information or anything with it, you could attach that, or you could write it on a Word document and attach all your evidence or complaint to that document, yeah, that one document. I, I, you don't get 11 complaint forms for 11 people. You can get one complaint form, and if you have anything that you want to put, like if it's a, a trooper or whatever at the date and time that you believe, and how many people are on scene, you just put everybody's name on that complaint form. Well, the issue I have with that is if you investigate one complaint form, um, it'll be assigned only one. Things. It'll be only assigned to one case number, so it's going to fall under one one group. Yeah, and I can't have that. It has. They have to be individual cases because right now, uh, several of your employees are under investigation for committing crimes. And who's investigating us, sir? Well, I'm investigating you right now. Okay. All right. So uh, I, I'll need separate complaint forms so that each one, each individual, can have their own separate incident number. Well, you don't get to dictate who gets the incident number. If it's an internal complaint filed to the agency, we'll dictate how many complaint forms or complaint cases are in that, if that makes sense. The only thing that you'll get from me is how to fill out a complaint form. You'll get a self-stamped envelope. You'll get an HP 160A, 161A, which is a complaint form, and you'll type everything on the complaint that you, of your allegations. Okay. And At if, that point in time, it's submitted to our Internal Affairs Division, which is our PSU, and per, professional standards units will assign a case to that. It wouldn't be if you if you're an investigating agency and you're the person that has all this documentation and you have all these cases that would be you at hand that would file a complaint or put the case numbers that you believe is referenced to your material not ours okay so and are you so you're saying that you will investigate yourselves our inter our 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 uh, professional standards units yes they do internal investigation you're absolutely right yes and are those investigators former highway state patrol yes okay excellent um also how do i retrieve property that was stolen from me from this agency did they give you, did they take property from you and give you uh, an evidence custody receipt? Uh, they did not give that to me, no. They they tried to pin it on some other individual who they coerced. Okay, all right. Uh, so what property are you looking for? I'm looking for my pipe and my marijuana. Well, you can't have that. You can't what have the mean, marijuana. It's against Kansas legal law to have any marijuana in the state. Well, what evidence do you have that that law applies to me? Uh, state law requires that that we can have evidence to any or you can't have marijuana in the state whatsoever what it doesn't what factual evidence state are you law requires what factual that. evidence are you relying on to make the claim that that state law applies to me because uh, you are in the state of Kansas it applies to you even if you're a visitor from another state what do you mean by the state of Kansas uh, you're in the state of Kansas the jurisdiction of the state of Kansas 
it makes marijuana illegal so you can't have it on your person or in your on your property if you are being stopped or been searched and it's there you can be charged with a crime or actually have it seized we will not allow you to have it it's not like california or arizona or other states that allow you to have one ounce on your body. I comprehend what you're saying. Yeah. I, I'm, but what I'm asking specifically is, are you referring to the legal fiction called the state of Kansas? Yes. Okay, and how can I be within, within a legal fiction? Well, you're, I'm calling you that you're within the state of Kansas, the boundaries of the, of the state of Kansas, and that forms under state law that all but residents or visitors have to comply with the state law. Just like if I went to Missouri or Arizona or you anything else, I have to comply with their state laws. Okay, so in the interest of time, you don't have to go into long explanations. Okay. Um, but what I'm asking is, do you have any facts that show that just because I'm physically located here, that the statutes that are written on paper for Kansas, called Kansas statutes, mm -hmm. do you have any factual evidence that those apply to me just because I'm physically located here? Yeah, they physically facts. abound me. Yeah, they... Show me fact, factual evidence that shows that just because I'm physically here, that that statute applies to me. I guess the real question that you'd have to do, you would have to show me factual evidence that shows me that you're allowed to have marijuana in the state of Kansas. Well, no, you're the one making the claim that I cannot. You're making the claim that I took it for unknown, unlawful reason. Uh, not unlawful. I'm saying that you stole it from me. That's, okay, well, then you have, to, you have to come up with the facts that allows me to give it back to you if I did take it. Yeah, so nobody has been able to show any sufficient evidence. Nobody has been able to show a single fact that proves that just because I'm physically located here, that Kansas statutes apply to me. Because of that, there I have no obligation to not have marijuana. Okay, well, I'm not going to sit here and argue with you well, over I'm, that. I'm, but, yeah. you, you just told me to give you my facts. Yeah, I, 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 just, that, I just gave you facts. There's, there's no factual evidence that allows yet. you to have, legal, ha, have marijuana on your person in the state of Kansas. Who says that I can't have marijuana? State law. We just discussed that. And what factual evidence do you have that shows that that state law applies to me? Because and, you're and, in the state of Kansas. That's why it applies to you. Factual evidence that shows that just because I'm physically located that the Kansas statute statutes apply to me. It does. Prove it. Okay, prove that it doesn't. I don't have to. You're the one that made the claim. I didn't make any claim, you, sir. You, I just showed up here. You claimed that the statute applies to me. Why are you saying that I claimed? Me? Because I just listened to you. I have evidence of you okay. saying it. So you have said that the statute applies right, to me. Right, because you're so, in the state of Kansas and you have to abide by the rules and regulations that are set forth by this state. Anybody does. Visitors or non-visitors. You, you can't just say that because I am here, you have to show some fact that explains how it is that I am here and that the statute applies to me, something that correlates those two things. Because just because you're in a football stadium at the 50-yard line, does that mean that the rules of the NFL apply to you? No. There ha there's some fact that correlates. The football players that the NFL rules apply to have at some point agreed to those rules. I have never agreed to follow any rules. I was just passing through, and you guys chose to uh, commit a crime against me. So unless I have evidence, factual evidence that shows that just because I'm physically located here, that your statutes that you are claiming apply to me actually do apply to me, then what you do when you put someone in, his, in a cage is kidnap them. What you do when you take somebody's property is theft. So you're saying that the high patrol stole marijuana and a marijuana pipe from you? Yes. Okay. All I, okay, I, I did, but they did not give you an evidential custody. They gave it to somebody else. Were you at the scene of whatever you're alleging that took place? Uh, I was present. Were you in the, what is it has to re refer to? What's the reference of, of, was it a traffic stop? Was it an accident? Was it a domestic violence call? What was the call that allegedly the troopers were responding to that you were on scene for? They stopped us okay. for no reason. They okay. stopped us because we were from a different state. and um, That's they, your opinion. Just to let you know, that's no, your no, opinion. No, that's what he said. He, he said he, that during the traffic stop when he walked up to you that he stopped you because you're from a different state? He said that the tags didn't return. Okay. Which tells me that he tried to run the plate for no reason. There's nothing alleged that 
was ever anybody doing anything wrong. Were you he, on private property at the time? No, this time? Okay, so you were on a public roadway when the, when oh, the license plate was red? I, I don't know if I was on a public roadway. I was on Highway 230 or whatever it is. Or, okay, or so it's, whatever that is. it's a public fair. And that's your opinion, but... Um, what is your opinion about interstate system? Well, it's just a road that I was on. That's all I know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna look up your legalese definitions of everything just to try to agree with your system. So he ran the plate okay. and said that nothing came back. So he decided to stop. We asked him if he had any factual. Well, first we established that um, we were there under threat of violence by asking what would happen if we left. He said he would chase us down and throw us in a cage. He said that specifically, word for word. He said he would pursue us and take us to jail. Okay. Which means chase us down and put us in a cage. That's your opinion about that. Well. That's that's your opinion. I'm just letting you know that's not factual what he said he would do. Uh, well, one one of the people ended up being put in a cage. So. Putting uh, in a cage by what do you mean? Like a dog cage or a kennel? One or, of one of your cages at the jail where the, the conditions are inhumane. And so at you the said Johnson they're taken to the, they're taken to jail. It's not my jail. I don't run that jail. Well, it's. It, I mean, then why do you take people there? Is is a very good question. So, we established that that there was a threat of violence, and then we asked him, "Do you have any evidence that we have an obligation to give you anything at all?" He never was able to come up with any evidence. His response was a circular argument which is which clearly is what you're trying to create in no nope, no nope, but anyway go no on. absolutely i'm not creating a circular argument okay his response was a logical fallacy known as a circular argument which says that the statute applies because the statute says it applies that's illogical so by your opinion well no not by my opinion at all that's the very definition of a lot a circular argument fallacy so if we went to a jury and had 12 jurors and you presented that to the jury, do you believe that the 12 people in the room would agree with your I, assessment? I can't speculate. Well, then I can't either. The, but the, that's your opinion. But, so I'm just letting you know, that's your opinion. Well, no, it's not my opinion. It's a fact. It, logic is based upon fact. You can prove things logically. If you are relying on a logical fallacy to say that a statute applies, here, here you have a square with the statute in it. I'm not going to read that statute until you show me some fact that exists outside of those words on paper that prove that this statute applies. So what is the correlation that proves that this statute applies? If you can explain it to me now, you would be the absolute first person to explain it. One person that I just talked to today over at Overland Police Department who, um, because there were a couple of those officers there too that I asked, he was the first person who has given me the honest answer, which is, I do not know of any factual evidence. So I suspect that if you were to be honest with me, then you would also not be aware of any factual evidence, which shows that you have no authority. I have no obligation to you to not have marijuana. You have no authority to take my property and threaten to put me in jail. Well, I didn't threaten to put you to jail. I, what I'm saying is you don't have the authority to do so. Okay. Unless you can show some fact that proves that just because I'm physically located here, that the Kansas statute applies to me. I could honestly say that there's no factual thing that I could show to you that says that. Well, of course not. Or not only just says that, but proves it. There's only state statutes, laws, and regulations that says that if you're in within the boundaries of any state, state of Kansas as well, laws would apply to citizens and visitors of the state. Mm -hmm. That's it. Well, you call them laws, but they're actually statutes, codes, ordinances, those sorts of things. Could be anything so, that you're talking so about. So any set of rules that you are going to try to say applies to me, before I just believe you... <laughs> because that is your opinion that they apply to me. Before I just believe you, I'm going to require facts. Okay. And, if, and if you are going to, or you or your fellow employees are going to initiate violence against me because we have a difference of opinion, then you are committing a crime. So- In your opinion. No. You're, you're 
Absolutely where, not. Where would you? Where was the factual evidence on your behalf that says the crime was committed? Then, if we are talking about, we are here to enforce statutes, codes, and everything else in the state of Kansas. Where would it? Where do you believe that with us upholding the statutes of the state of Kansas? it's a burden that you believe that you're exempt of those laws because you can only uphold those statutes and apply those statutes to people who you have personal first-hand knowledge of facts that show that those statutes apply to that person you can't just make an assumption that those statutes apply to that person especially when the person is challenging your assumption that those statutes apply like that, sh that should tip you off right away. Like maybe these statutes don't apply and he's asking us to pro provide the evidence that they do. So absent any factual evidence that they do apply, you, you should leave us alone. That's your opinion well, back in then. No, if, if, if the, if the- Back to my question to you. If we were in a room and you have 12 other people and that in you presented the same thing to you, do you believe those 12 people would say that the rules do not apply to you as it does them and everybody else? It, it doesn't matter what they say because... Because it, you're it, selecting that you just want to be... No. Not that you want to be your own individual person. Well, I am my own individual right, but person. Right, but only in with laws and rules and everything else that applies to you. So I have a question for you. Do you pay for fuel and food and restaurants that you go to and gas stations like everybody else? Well, I'm or sure do I you do. believe that the price doesn't that's, apply to you? That's different. I'm not causing it's, anybody harm. See, here, here's the thing. How, if, how, did, how, did, how, did, how did enforcing laws in the state apply for you harm? I think you're, I mean, I believe you're perfectly fine right now sitting in front of me. What, I, what I'm saying is if, I'm, if I have a plant in my pocket, and a pipe in my pocket, I'm not causing anybody harm. So for you to come up and say, oh, I know you're not causing anybody harm, but it's my opinion that you can't have this perfectly natural plant that you bought in your hometown uh, on you because you happen to be Where is in your our hometown, place. if you don't let me ask? Oh, I live over in Oregon. Okay. Um, I actually got, I guess I got it up in Washington, but you know, neither here nor there irrelevant but well you, those states are legal to have one ounce on your person well that it's the legality of something doesn't matter unless you can prove that the statute applies to the person okay so you you can't what i'm saying is is if i'm not causing anybody harm i have the freedom to do what i want as long as i'm not causing harm uh rials deputy rials and lieutenant morrison both caused me harm they caused me injury, they kidnapped somebody else, and they stole my property, and they still have it. And now, they're trying to threaten us further, to the point there where it is not safe for us to even leave this so-called state. What do you mean by they threaten you and fur? Well, they charged with a policy violation. They charged, they, they a co- A policy violation? Well, that's what a statute is, is, it's a policy. That's why they call people police, policy, police. Okay, okay. I see where so, you're going so, with it now. So, you, this agency, not you at the human specifically, but this agency, that, that is the you that I'm speaking of, okay. kidnapped this other person, you coerced a false confession from them, and now you're going to attempt to charge them with a policy violation. Okay. So I am here in order to give you guys the opportunity to A, leave us alone, and B, possibly just give me my property back. So I can't, I don't know what you're, what property you're talking about without H, without uh, Evans custody form. So if you don't have that, I don't know if we even own the property. Well, I can bring one but it won't be in my name okay well then i need to have the person that was that you're the person that got it would have to show up in person as well okay and, what and then the... i will facilitate your complaint form like i said i'll give you that i'll give you a self-adjust envelope and i'll give you even a brochure about how to file a complaint as well okay and then it'll also have that on the back of there there's a, a 
information for our t headquarters in Topeka. That's where the, our Kansas Highway Patrol headquarters is. And then you could request from them the bond and insurance stuff from there, and they'll be glad to facilitate that for you. Okay, so how do we specifically, what is a specific process for getting the property back? I'll just let you know right this moment in time, with the state in Kansas and the policy, state statute, we are unable to give you what the state policymakers believe marijuana is illegal in the state. You will not receive that back from our agency. I, I, I can't facilitate, I can't give you something that is against the law in the state of Kansas back to you as a human being that you believe is legal. It's I not, just no, can't. no, no, it's not that I believe it's legal, nor, nor is it against the law. It's, it's a violation of a statute specifically. Like I know, I know that you're using this term law in order to, and it, it, well, it really it, muddies the water in your mind is what it does. So the state statute doesn't allow anybody to possess or, or with an intent to use or distribute any marijuana in this state. Even for those that that statute does not apply to? Do you have a medical uh, reason for it? Of course I do. Okay. Obviously, then, that's why I have it. Well, then, th then that would need to be brought documentation, but the person who received the custody form would have to be here in person. How would I and have documentation of my medical use? Because you said you use it for medical. Well, of course I do, but I, I don't, I don't you, have you, little you, slips you, of paper, the magical slips you, of paper that make it But you didn't get medical. it from a person that's a DO or MD. Okay. You're doing it yourself. You're self-evaluating your medical needs. As... People As a doctor, should. so you're, so okay, all right. Well, that's fine. If you don't have a, a doctor's certification from a medical facility that says that you have marijuana uh, because you have glaucoma or something else or cancer and it's medically needed for you, you still will not receive the marijuana that we confiscated from you that day of the traffic stop. So would you say that, in your opinion, you guys are above the so-called laws that you were saying apply to me? Why did I say that I'm above those laws when I'm not going to give you the illegal drugs that you had on your person? Because person's? you guys are possessing those things. So do you believe that you are some sort of exception? We hold that for evidence. We are not selling it or using it. Evidence that. of what? Evidence that we obtained from the person that had it on with the vehicle or situation you were stopped on. Evidence of a policy violation when you have If you no, want to turn it that when way, you, yes. Well, that's what it is. Evidence well, of that's a... Your, back to your Okay, opinion. evidence of a violation of a statute. Okay, fair enough. When there nobody has yet to show that there's any fact that would show that that statute applies to the person. It's your I, opinion. I guess that's true. So why are you willing to risk initiating violence against somebody based upon your personal opinion. I'm sworn to uphold the law of the state of Kansas. And like I said, the statute says it is illegal for anybody to possess that. Are you sworn to uphold the law or are you sworn to uphold the statute? I'm sworn to can, uphold can the law be... or the statute. However, whatever your opinion is, but it's still the law of the state of Kansas. Well, no, law is a scientific term. It's a descriptive term of things that happen in nature. Okay, well, how about we stop the debate and I'll just give you the complaint form and I'll let you fill it out. Well, is that fair? I, I guess I'm still wondering why it is that you believe it is okay to initiate violence against somebody based upon a difference of opinion. Your opinion about violence is different probably than my opinion of violence. Uh, throwing somebody in a cage, putting them in handcuffs, taking them from their children, uh, stealing their property. If I If I did the same thing to you... Would you not consider that violence? It just depends on what's the situation. You're you're trying to mingle a lot of things in one okay. one justification. You are trying to blend that you have every right to have what the drugs and everything else on your person. Why legally. wouldn't I? But listen to what I have to say. Legally, not legally. Believe, okay. Have Le legality has nothing to do with it. Okay, that you believe that you have every right to possess what you have. You have every right to not register your vehicle or have insurance on the vehicle or whatever other things that were wrong with the vehicle at the time. So we, as police, like you want to say it, that we enforce policy. So when we stopped you over the time, I can't give you something that is a, the policy of state of the state of Kansas and let you possess something illegal. The state of Kansas will not give that back to you. But it's only illegal if that statute applies. You can't prove that the statute applies. You have no personal first-hand knowledge of evidence that it does. So 
why are you claiming that I do not have the freedom to possess this thing? Because I'm a policy enforcer. Okay, so what if I wrote down a policy that says you're not allowed to own a wristwatch? And okay. I say, I'm going to put you in handcuffs because I've written down on a piece of paper that you're not allowed to have that wristwatch. And now, because you do, I'm going to put you in handcuffs and I'm going to lock you in my basement. If I said that, would you not consider that violence? But you're trying to, to twist policy to a wristwatch. No, I'm doing, I'm doing the exact same thing you did. In your opinion, well, yes. Well, no. No, it's not my opinion. It is the exact same thing. I created a policy that you are not allowed to have this thing despite you're not harming anybody. You're just not allowed to have that because I think that it has electromagnetic frequencies that may affect my brain waves or something, or, or maybe it'll, it maybe for your safety, because some thing could come along and grab you by that watch and drag you along the road or something. So for your own safety, I'm going to go ahead and write down this policy on a piece of paper and I don't care if you have a difference of opinion. I mean, my, my policy applies to everybody that I see. And, and by the way, I have, I've, I've gotten, uh, you know, 25 other of my friends to agree with me that you shouldn't have a wristwatch. Okay. So we're all just going to tie you up and lock you in a basement. That's the exact same scenario as you are doing to me and my friend. Who How do I get out of your basement for my, if I'm not supposed to have a watch? What's that? How do I, what's the process to get out of your basement for having a watch? Well, that's up to whatever other rules we've applied. Maybe we'll have our own judge. Maybe we'll have our own type of jury. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll give you due process. But, but we agree. We all agree that you're not allowed to have that. So whatever way that we have written down on our paper that will release you maybe you will be released maybe you won't maybe just like having a cell phone on and hit record how do i know that that's not giving me cancer right now as i'm talking to you yeah it could be giving you cancer too could be but if you i mean you could end up having stomach cancer right but i'm because you have the phone there and you're recording and it's putting on radio waves mm -hmm. and it could eventually hurt you and hurt me do i get to come back and sue you or file, file medical issues with me since you have a cell phone on? If, if you can show that the thing that I have done is causing you injury, then sure, absolutely. Okay. If you can show that the thing that I am doing is causing you injury, then I will reimburse you. I will make you whole. Okay. Because if I cause injury, that is a crime. And... I will be held accountable for the crime. But are you taking all responsibility because you didn't make that cell phone? You're taking all the responsibility from the cell phone user? I, that I, you're saying that everything that they put into that was good and good? So you're saying that you're not, claiming everything and the rules that the, that the cell phone company made? Well, now, now you're tempting to muddy the waters. <laughs> well, that's like, what you're I, doing with me. Well, no, I'm not. I'm saying all I had was a plant. I wasn't causing anybody harm. All yeah. right. It was. It was. I, not, I, I, it get, was I get what you're saying. I, I get. I know where you're at. Yeah. Do you have an ID so I can put your name on uh, the complaint form for you? Um. No. I'll write my name. Okay. All right. There's okay. no ID that has my name on it. You don't have an ID. Not that has my name on it. about this picture is this a crash dummy mm -hmm. okay good because it looked like torture so <laughs> okay here's a self-address stamp envelope to return the complaint form okay so what you want to do is you're going to put your um, complaint name your address date phone number telephone number okay what you want to do is you're going to put date and time of the incident and you're going to write down if you want to now your choice you could type up if you have all the documents on a word on your computer and you have it all typed out, you could print that off. Just fill out the information, sign at the bottom for me, okay? And uh, and then you can put it all, staple it together, put all the information in your uh, printouts from your computer if you want to do it that way and any other documents and mail it back to that address. And then at that point in time, it comes here, 
and then we take it over to our internal affairs division over in Topeka. If you're not happy about returning it to here, then, then the pamphlet that you took that was up there mm -hmm. shows the Topeka address and you can mail it directly to internal affairs or to PSU, Professional Standards Unit. Okay. So it doesn't have to come back here and you can have it set up over there so you know, or you could drop it off over there at the Topeka headquarters for me. Okay, now considering, uh, considering that, um, thank you by the way, for actually being cordial as well. Um, You're welcome. Considering that uh, you guys are going to be doing an internal investigation, um, what what do you propose about the ethics of holding the people responsible criminally accountable? If you if you don't believe that the internal investigation of our professional standing units will suffice to your needs or wants, then you could turn around and call the attorney general's office at the state of Kansas, and you could file a complaint with them as well. Okay, now what, what about if I um, don't necessarily trust that this system will agree that the code is not applicable to me despite the fact that nobody has evidence that it is? Um, what do you believe about the ethics of using my own system to hold people criminally responsible? I just don't think in today's society that that's going to go anywhere. I'll okay. just let you know. We have... If you want to do policies, rules, or whatever that regulate you and I, there's a system and a way to file complaints and file undue process that you believe that happened against you. Okay. So if you don't believe that our internal investigation will go very well, and you don't believe that filing a complaint with the Attorney General's office at the state of Kansas is going very well, I can't give you anything outside of that. There is other avenues you can go to, um, you know, um, but I don't know if those would be other entities that you would have to file through, ACLU. I don't know if they will pick up your complaint or not to say if anything is wrong. You can turn around and file a complaint with the Attorney General's Office of the federal yeah. government, up at D.C., to see that the state of Kansas is not good. But that's your that's opinion. I just, but I just don't know if what your information will give will have enough weight to even trigger them to do anything. Does right. that make sense? So I, so I guess the reason... the. Basically, the reason I'm attempting to have these conversations, and, and frankly, it's been frustrating because some people are quite rude when I attempt to have these conversations, but the reason I'm attempting to is to prevent a war. Um, I, I think that you have noticed that there are more and more people that are beginning to kill police officers and, and things like that. Well, I don't want you to, hopefully you're not threatening, <laughs> no, threatening I'm not, us. No, I'm not threatening you at all. Just okay. please listen. Um, it, it's disturbing to me that this is happening. So, and, and the reason that it is happening is because there actually is no evidence that these rules apply and you're condoning slavery just by doing your job. Do you believe, so are you speaking for everybody that has been in an officer involved shooting no. or anything like that, or is that just your opinion? Well, it's my opinion. It's, it's what I've seen in many of the situations where that has happened. I just wanted to make sure because you, if you're putting it all in it, you're speaking for a lot of people. Well, if that makes sense. Yeah, and, and it's, it's because I keep my pulse on what is actually going on. I, I, I pay attention to what people are doing and whatnot. So I'm concerned, A, because your job by its nature is unethical. Your job by its nature con condones slavery. I can show you that. I can prove it to you. And if we, if we were ever to have the opportunity to have a conversation where I asked you, some more interesting questions, you would eventually come to the same conclusion as I do. Um, so you, there you, is you a would, way. You, you maybe, maybe persuade my opinion, maybe not, don't know. Well, it wouldn't be an issue of opinion because what I'm actually speaking about is, a, is an issue of fact. And that is why people are swayed when they actually decide to effectively communicate. Um, so I'm just concerned because there is a way to do your job ethically. There is a way to do it. But right now, you're condoning slavery because you're telling me that I'm not allowed to have something that grows in the ground when I have caused nobody harm. Well, I'm, it's back to policy, like we talked about. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm here to enforce policy, not only state law, but federal law. Right. If you want to look at the federal statute, marijuana is still... Uh, a drug that's not legal. There's still no evidence that federal statutes apply. Well, and, and, and that is the issue, is if you are attempting to force your opinion upon other people just because you have agreement from a large number of people, um, 
that's slavery, that's violence. So you can't just, just because 55% of the people have a difference of opinion than 45% of the people, that doesn't mean that you can treat that 45% violently. So this is what... So I have another question for you there, okay? okay. So back to the watch mm -hmm. and your 25 friends, mm -hmm. okay? So if 11 people disagree with the watch, or let's put it this way, six people disagree with the watch and six people agree with that, who's the ultimate change or who's the ultimate person to say that the watch is illegal in the scenario that you gave me a few minutes ago? Nobody. You can't say that the watch is illegal. You can only say that the watch is illegal for those who have agreed to follow that rule, to, who have agreed to follow that statute. So, if you, so with that said, let's do it the other way. We have five people that agree that the watch is not illegal. We have seven people that do. Does majority rule then and the, and the watch is illegal? No, because as long as you're not causing anybody harm, the majority cannot impose their violent opinion. Or they cannot impose violence based upon their opinion on those five other people because that would be unethical. If, if I'm not allowed to rob my neighbor, it doesn't make it right if I go get 20 more people to say, oh yeah, you can rob your neighbor, or 500 people, or 1,000 people. If I don't have the right to rob my neighbor, then there is not a number of people that can make it right. Okay, so answer me this. Then in your scenario, based with the watch scenario, so it's obviously a world with not too many rules or policies or statutes or codes. Okay, so I would disagree. You tell me. So tell me. So in the same scenario we talked about with the watch, how do you regulate that? Because if you just say that the watch is illegal, so is robbery illegal? It's not about legality. Okay. It's that robbery is wrong. But why is ro robbery wrong? Because you're violating somebody else's freedom. Why? Not if I go over there and just take their TV. If you take their TV, you're violating their freedom. You're violating their freedom to How about have. If they had two property? other TVs in there, and I just want one because I don't have one. Doesn't matter. That's selfish. That's 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 uh, envy. You, that's uh, you can't just take somebody's property. That's something that they earned. That's something that they possess. Oops, sorry. You're fine. Um, so, taking somebody's property against their will is still going to be theft. That's still going to be a violation. But now you're back into the policy. No. Policies don't apply there. No, it's not a policy. I mean, so it, you're saying that's so, a law? Well, I'm. I'm just asking. So, so you, it, it's so you're saying that theft is a law? It's a violation. Theft is a violation. Everybody, people know that it's wrong to okay. steal. Okay. So, prime example here. Okay. So, you're not going to steal from Home Depot. You wouldn't dine and dash at a restaurant. You're going to pay for your gas. Mm -hmm. All right, we all know because now you just established theft is wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next question to you. So back to your license plates. Were they valid on the car? Mm -hmm. I mean, according to like according to your standards, they were. The only reason we care about that. No, I'm just asking. So is is your vehicle? Is it from Oregon? Is well, that where license plates are out of? Uh, that one was from Florida. Okay, so those tags in Florida or whatever, that that vehicle was registered to Florida. Yeah. And it was in the DMV, everything was paid for. Yep, and the only, the only reason we care about any of that is so that people like you won't bother us. It's it's only you to mean, mitigate... Pe pe people in my same uh, work base. Yeah, people... Not... Like, I, I, I would... To be honest, I have to consider you a criminal. Your job is criminal by its very nature. So in order to mitigate the violence that is caused, we have to do some things to at least make it so that you'll leave us alone when possible. So survival. Yeah. So you're saying you, you, you will comply with some laws for survival so you're not, I guess, bothered. Not laws, statutes. Statutes yes, bothered because, by people that have to enforce statutes or policies. Yeah, it, it's because... But it goes back to same scenario I asked you earlier. You somewhat choose and pick what policies and statutes that you comply with. Um, 
Well, it's it's not that in we're, reality, yes. It's not that we're complying with statutes. Like I don't care about the statute. All I care about is being left alone. Okay. All I care about is not having my property stolen. Okay, All I right. care about is not having to worry about going into a cage when I haven't hurt anybody or done anything wrong. There's nothing immoral about having a plant. <laughs> There's nothing immoral about having a little pipe. So, in your opinion, well, we'll just leave it that way. Is your opinion? Well, if you think that some, I mean, I, we, that, you, I mean, you respect that I disagree with you. I'm just and you, you, and I respect that you disagree with me. But in all reality, I believe that's your opinion. Does that make sense? Well, okay, I guess. I, I'm, I not, I'm not trying to get yeah, this yeah, in an argument and throw it out yeah, fight. I, I'm I just saying that is your opinion. I might disagree with it now, okay. but we'll just leave it as that. Well, I, I would be curious to comprehend your rationale behind why it would be immoral to have a plant or to possess a plant. <laughs> Well, there, there's, but then, <laughs> but then you're looking at, you, as you as well as know, there's different kinds of plants in society. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't sit here and debate it all in the evening. Right. You and, know, if and, we went through and got the plant book out and we started reading the names of plants that are in here from, from, you know, bluegrass, buffalo grass, mm -hmm. sunflower, lily, anything we want to go through, we'd be here Till tomorrow. Well, sure, but okay. I mean, we could look. We could just boil it down to all plants, or we could boil it down to. I think it's unethical to own this type of plant. So I, I would be curious as to why, for example. Okay, so <laughs> while we're discussing things, this is discussion yeah, now. Yeah, it's okay? great. All right, we'll do discussions. Okay. All right, what is your opinion about guns in society? Guns in society, as long as you're not causing any harm. You're okay with that. Yep. Okay. What do you think about speed limits? Uh, if you're not, well, a speed limit by its nature would be unethical because the only way that you could enforce a speed limit is if A, everybody agrees with it, or B, if a person is causing harm by the way they are driving. If they're, if they're making people afraid and it's like, yeah, people are scared, then it's, it's not the sign on the side of the road that says 55 that matters. It's the action that they're doing. If they're creating uh, a so, state of fear. So when you're driving down the highway, let's just say you're driving down the highway and it's posted 75 miles an hour, and someone passes you at 100 miles an hour and shakes the doors and what we call would peel the paint off the car, mm -hmm. okay, would you be scared at that time? Do you believe that person should have some kind of policy enforced upon them? Um, I mean, if... If they just went by and didn't cause harm, if, 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 I guess if the fear was temporary, then it would be hard to hold them accountable for it, unless they cause injury. If they so crash. then we step up the factor. Let's say it goes down and runs, a, runs through an intersection and hits somebody and kills somebody. Then how do we enforce that? Well, now the person has caused injury. So now you can look at, because of their actions, because... If we're to be perfectly honest, and if we start with this this thing, this idea first, is, I'm just asking. Right. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, 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 yeah I'm, we're, we're doing great. Right. Um, the somebody who decides to go 100 miles an hour down the road and then speeds into somebody and crashes into them and kills them is likely not concerned about the sign on the side of the road. He's likely doing it for a different reason. So right. the so sign on the side of the road, the policy around that is likely irrelevant. Um, however, the person causing an injury, now we can look at, okay, well, you've done this. Um, now you've shown us that you don't deserve to be able to use a car. You, you, you shouldn't have that freedom until you can show us that you do. So we're looking... But then, but then it goes back to the same person says, show me the policy that regulates me to be able to operate that motor vehicle if I'm driving the speed on it safely. Yeah, Just because I got in a crash doesn't mean that I was a bad driver. Well, sure. So we But can... even if I killed some during that crash, doesn't mean that I'm a bad driver. Yeah, you have to look at it at a, on a case-by-case -case basis. Right. But it's not a policy. It's the fact that he caused injury. If he causes the injury, he makes everybody whole, he pays his debt, in whatever way, then okay, we can we can if, look at you know, that. But how about if he has no money? He just you know, then what do we do? Well, that, that I don't know. It depends on the situation. But the the, the I get what you're trying to say, and I, I respect everything that you you 
the debate that we had today. Yeah. I really enjoy it, honestly. Yeah, so do I. So, but, um, but back to the real part of the question. I've given you every outlet I could possibly get for you to file a complaint with this agency. Mm -hmm. I've given you every opportunity to show that, hey, yes, we do it internally. These are the other options to go if you don't believe that the internal is going to be suffice to you. I can't uphold any other, you know, um, law or enforcement of that, even if you say that you want to investigate it yourself. You can investigate it yourself. I just don't know if you're going to have the platform to present that case, if that makes sense. Okay. And you're you're probably 100% totally aware of that. I constantly get, well, yeah, and I, I constantly get dismissals in court because I bring up this these same questions and nobody ever has the facts. One but thing, it's kind of like the circle conversation. Well, it's always... It's always the person saying the statute applies because the statute says it applies that is creating the circular argument. Okay. Um, one thing that you could do is correct the record because the person was coerced into giving a false confession the, well, that that was hers. But I wasn't. I can't correct it because I wasn't on scene. I wasn't the person there. Does that make sense? It does. I so, mean, it's just like me coming to you and saying, hey, could you correct the fact that I didn't rob the house and you weren't even home yet. Right. Or there or didn't see me. I you how would you be able to correct that or justify as a witness if you weren't at the house? So there's evidence that it's mine. It was bought in Washington. Um, she's from Florida. Yeah. And, um, and that, also, in that uh, situation, please put that in the report in your complaint form that you believe that you would request that the property is being given back to you because of these scenarios. One, you bought it in Washington and where it's legal. Two, she's from Florida. Three, it's yours. Well, and B, Thank I don't you. want her criminally prosecuted for Okay. Her. So I guess my issue is, can we get the body cam footage to We don't elaborate? have body cams, but we have car cameras. We don't have body cams. Wait a minute. Hold on. Our agency doesn't have body cams. Rials, are you saying that Rials didn't have a body cam? We don't have body cams in Hyrule. And Hyrule. Morrison didn't have a body cam? We have in-car cameras. They said they had body cams. No, I, I wasn't there, so I can't dispute that. Right. But I'll just let you know, we ha we don't have body, I don't have a body cam on me now. Uh -huh. uh, I do have an in-car video uh, that is recording, and uh, it records my interaction with any general public. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's on now. Okay. Uh, but it's just recording the front of the building. It record the conversation because I have a mic pack right here. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that's all it's doing. Okay. Uh, but that over there. Now, if you want to, uh, you're 